All right, thank you, judges. Um, let's see, up next we have Double Edge Studios with Seven Samurai. Scene play and introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Shreya Sundar Ganesh. I was a programmer for this. I'm Alan Wilkinson. I did the animation for the game. Hi, my name is Casey Allen. I did all three models you see. I'm Logan Cox and I was a programmer. Uh, my name is Tyler Lee and I was the level design and producer. Uh, and we present to you guys uh, Summit Samurai. I was trying to get the time down, but they took they spoke too fast. <laughs> okay, um, here we go, going to our level. Uh, the player is greeted with the remains of several other robot samurai. Once the black screen fades in, it's going to. <laughs> there we go, okay. And if he, the player turns around, he sees the controls, WSD to move. Uh, left click to attack, E to dash, mm -hmm. spacebar to jump. Um, very short tutorial, you can work mm -hmm. run right through it. And then we're going to go into our first room. So this first room is just a very basic enemy. Uh, this one we're fighting without the entire enemy in. Uh, using the melee ring, uh, the melee one, uh, so you can fight with the red colors. Moving on to the next room, the player will go into the aquaponics room. Um, music and sound design was a pretty big uh, design choice for us. We just uh, the music we picked was trying to get uh, the player to uh, like, like just net, bob their head, get into the gameplay, really uh, try to get the theme of the habits, which is here under the health bar. I'm the pop-up that just uh, occurred. That is the habit bar, or the flow state bar. That, in, that occurs when the player damages uh, the enemies and without getting hit. And once the player gets hit, uh, the health, the flow, and the habit bar resets. So, uh, we were awarded um, the habit by increased damage and attack speed. Um, so it helps. It helps. It rewards the player for building that habit of uh, healing damage, uh, and dodging attacks, and such other things like. So as Shreyas is clearing up this room, um, we can talk about the roles that the enemies have. Um, the red enemy is just very simple. It much in attack with melee. The purple enemies, which is the range. Um, they stand back for a mentally good distance, and they have used to pressure the player into, uh, into dodging, so they can't just stand there and just swing a sword and attack and farm all the red guys. They have to move, they have to dash. They can use their environment around them, such as those planet boxes, to uh, uh, dodge and avoid arrows. Moving on to the next room, we have the observatory area. So as I uh, said earlier, all the models, all the animations are made here by the team. Uh, all the shader graphs, um, post processing really helped our team uh, with visuals. If you look outside, you will see uh, you are in space, which is kind of obvious from the whole design of the spaceship and everything. Um, that, as well as the music, are, I believe, the only things in the game that we did not make. Uh, everything else was started like from the ground up. Um, all of the AI, the models, the animations, rigging them, all of that. Um, the attacks have variable damage. So from the first attack to the second to the third, as you get the uh, flow of it going, 
you do more damage until you reset that combo and you do back to the start. It has three different animations to show which um, stage of the attack you're on and you will regen health over time. So here we move on to the reactor room. Uh, this is, there are also two other textures that we did not make. The uh, hazard sign right next to the reactor as well as the metal grades on the ground. Uh, said that this arenas are progressively harder and more there are more enemies uh, for love for arena. So the first one I believe has 25, this one has uh, I think 45. So progression is another big part of it. One of the big design choices we made was uh, dashing and damaging enemies. Uh, during development we found that players just like they wouldn't be the dash around them because they didn't offer any rewards. Um, Dashing now pushes enemies back, uh, which helps the player make that space that they need, especially because the loud, the large clumps of enemies that oh, there you go, he's dead. Um, you can see that you can reset the level, return to main menu. We also have a, a, a settings menu as well as a uh, uh, gallery, I guess would be the word for it. Um, you can preview all the animations in the game there. This kind of threw a wrench into our plans because he wasn't supposed to die at this part. <laughs> um, and we don't exactly have the skip button in this build, so. Yeah, we can use the video and we can show you guys our boss, uh, boss fight. Just give us like, a sec while we pull that out. Okay, so after the player uh, kills all the enemies in the reactor scene, a door will open up that leads the player to a black fade transition. And then we're greeted with another animated cutscene. This is our boss fight. This is the ritual part of our game, uh, the habits uh, earlier. Uh, so the boss has three different attacks. The first one right there is the fire. Uh, he can launch fire from across the map. His second attack is just a basic swing, right there. And his third attack is a dash, where after taking uh, an amount of damage, he'll jump back, and you'll hear a wind-up charge sound, and then he'll dash towards you. So using the, you can see when the player hits him, uh, his lights go out. That was to provide the player feedback that he's actually damaging the player. You also notice that when the, the boss starts his attack animations, uh, he no longer is able to damage, and that can be shown through the sound effects of that thinking sound that you can hear, as well as that his lights aren't going out when he's doing the attack animation. And we're just going to skip to the boss cutscene. Okay. 